Okay, so I get emails and questions all the time in regards to integration, and people say, hey, what technique do I use? How can I always know what technique to use? And my answer to that question is, I don't have an answer for you. Um, the short answer is there's not a gold, there's not some rule that's going to tell you what to do every single time. If, if there was, people would have told you by now. It's not some, some bit of uh, uh, wisdom that they only give you, um, you know, down the road. This is the, the difficulty with integration is it's not always clear what to do. But let me show you at least, maybe I can pick out some slightly more challenging examples where it's not always clear what to do. And let me show you how I tend to approach them and uh, at least think about them. So, again, maybe this one's not the most impossible problem in the world. Maybe, it's, maybe it is challenging for you. So, I don't know, I guess I would ask you, do you know how to integrate 1 plus e to the x over 1 minus e to the x dx? Do you know how to do that? Well, I don't know it right off the top of my head, and that's actually something I, I ask myself. Okay, When it comes to integration, I think, do I just immediately know an antiderivative for that function? Or is it something that I should know? And, you know, that's kind of a vague question, but obviously you have to know lots of just basic antiderivative formulas. So this, to me, is probably not one that I should know immediately, and, it, and it's not. But then I think, you know, is there any sort of algebra or maybe some sort of trig identity I can use to turn it into something that I know? Well, you know, algebra, maybe there is some algebra to do. I'm not positive off the top of my head. I definitely, you know, there's no trig, so certainly it's not a trig identity. But that's something that I keep in, my, keep in the back of my mind. Okay, if I don't know it, the next thing I think of is, can I use a u substitution? And, you know, I'm thinking, I don't know... Maybe I could let u be e to the x, or 1 plus e to the x, or 1 minus e to the x. I'm not positive. I'll revisit that. A lot of the more challenging problems involve using a u substitution and then some other technique. Okay, integration by parts. I don't, you know, I, I, you can pick something to be u and something to be dv. Um, again, I don't really see what would be u and what would be dv. Of course, you can... Again, get your hands dirty and try. So I don't know, maybe it's integration by parts, but I don't think so. Trig integral, well, well, you know, there's no trig in here, so we don't have to worry about trig integrals. Trig substitutions, typically we do trig substitutions when there's quadratics floating around. You know, x squared plus or minus a squared. A lot of times you see them underneath square roots. They don't have to be. Um, but certainly I don't see that at, in the present situation. So I think, well, it's not trig substitution. Partial fraction is when we have rational functions, you know, x over x squared plus 5x plus 6, something of that nature. Well, this is not a rational function uh, because we have e to the x floating around. So I think, well, it's not partial fractions either. So now, well, I've kind of got it narrowed down to two things. It's either a u sub or integration by parts. So I'm going to try to do a substitution here. The thing that's sort of throwing me off that makes me, I guess, uncomfortable is this e to the x. So I'm going to let u equal e to the x, and I'm going to solve for dx, and to do that I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. So we'll have the natural logarithm of u equals the natural logarithm of e to the x, which is just x. And now if we find our differential, we'll have 1 over u, du on the left, and we'll just have 1 dx on the right. Okay, so now let's use this stuff and see if this has helped us at all. Well, I guess we'll have 1 plus u in the numerator. Then we'll have 1 minus u. And then we just said dx is 1 over u du. And now I'm actually starting to feel pretty good about this. Okay, So I'm not going to multiply out the denominator. Because now I'm recognizing this. After doing the substitution, I recognize this as actually being a partial fractions problem. And for partial fractions, we try to factor the denominator as much as possible. So there's really no good reason. That's why I didn't multiply them. I recognize that. We want it factored anyway. So I'm just going to leave it alone. So now I think, aha, I'm kind of off and running. So I'm going to do my partial fractions decomposition. We have 1 plus u over u times 1 minus u. And again, I've got lots of videos on partial fractions if you want to see more of these. But again, we've got linear factors, we've got u and also 1 minus u, 
and the numerator will stick constants a and b. And now we just have to solve for a and b. So if we multiply both sides uh, of our equation by u times 1 minus u, we'll have 1 plus u on the left. On the right, we'll be left with a times 1 minus u plus b times u. And now to figure out a and b, we can just substitute in values. If we let u equal positive 1, on the left side we'll have 1 plus 1 or 2. If we plug in u equals 1 on the right, our first term will be gone. We'll get a times 0. So we'll have b times 1, or we'll simply get that b equals 2. And likewise, it looks like we could let u equal 0. On the left side we'll have 1. On the right side we'll be left with a times 1. The term involving b will be gone. So we'll get that a equals 1. And now I'm getting pretty close here. So we're going to integrate 1 plus u over u times 1 minus u. Well, we're going to split that up as a over u plus b over 1 minus u. Again, we just said that a equals positive 1 and b equals positive 2. Well, the first one, if we integrate, we'll just get the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u. For the second, we'll get the natural logarithm of 1 minus u divided by negative 1. And again, I recognize that they're natural logarithms. You have a linear factor in the denominator. Whatever the coefficient is on the variable, you have to divide by it. And again, if you want to see this, you know, just do a, uh, a u substitution. So for example, on the second part, maybe we let t equal 1 minus u, dt would be negative 1 du, so we'll divide by negative 1, and then we're going to be integrating, well let's see, we've got negative 1, and then in the denominator we would just have our t, so if we integrate we'll get negative 2 times the natural logarithm of t, but t again is 1 minus u uh, plus c, so that's where that's coming from, the negative 2. Again, when you do the substitution, you basically divide out by the coefficient, which is why you end up picking it up. All right, so now we're almost there. It's just a matter of resubstituting. So we said u was equal to the e to the x. That was our initial substitution. Again, you could simplify this a little bit. I'm going to be lazy and not do it. But there's our antiderivative, okay? So a lot of times on these, again, I'm looking for u subs that'll turn it into some other problem. But again, I'm basically just trying to, you know, rule out certain techniques, which is, which in this, in a lot of problems, it's very easy to at least say, well, it's not a trig integral and it's not a trig substitution. This, again, at the beginning, it's definitely not a partial fractions problem either. So you're really down to only a couple things to try. You know, um, if this u substitution didn't work, and when I pick u substitutions, I start simple, and then, you know, maybe if e to the x didn't work, maybe I'll try 1 plus e to the x or 1 minus e to the x and see if that helps me out, uh, you know, if that helps out better. In this case, though, simply u equals e to the x works. So I'm going to do some more quote-unquote challenging integral problems where they take you quite a few steps. If you want to see some extra examples with detailed solutions, while helping support your friend Patrick JMT, you can check out my worksheets. I'm going to put a link in the description. I've got 30 uh, challenging integral integration problems with detailed solutions that uh, you can uh, uh, purchase for a, a very reasonable rate if you are so inclined. So, um, But by all means, I'm definitely going to do some other videos and some other examples of these as well.